morning everyone and welcome to our backyard I am in a corner in my backyard and today's video I would like to talk about butterflies my name is Crystal I garden in zone 9 south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast and we have hot and humid weather very humid and we typically have a lot of rain and heavy clay soil. And so what grows in one region in a zone nine does not necessarily grow in another. And especially if you are in a dry zone nine, that's very different than a hot and humid, very humid, wet zone nine. Plants just perform differently and so I welcome you to my backyard because I've had a couple of questions lately about butterflies. And if you see hummingbirds or hear hummingbirds, I do have them jousting, if you will, in the backyard. So butterflies are unique to an area, meaning not all butterflies are across all areas in the United States. And so if you are interested in creating butterfly spaces, you'll want to find out what works best in your area. And I highly recommend you getting some type of information, whether you get it online or purchase it. One of the things you see right in front of me here is called a host plant and this happens to be I've got a couple of plants different plants here that are intermingled it is passion vine I have a hybrid passion vine called incense and I also have a native passion vine called the cotton leaf and the reason having host plants is so important if you want butterflies it is this is where the butterflies lay their eggs and the caterpillars grow and they create their chrysalises and then will turn into adult butterflies. You will have butterflies visit your garden if you have flowers that are nectar plants. They will certainly come, but you won't have them in the numbers if you are interested in getting butterflies to come into your garden if you don't have the host plants. And so this is really the key. I mentioned doing some searching and getting some information. I have what's called a field reference guide. This happens to be laminated. And I purchased this off of Amazon. It was, if I remember right, under $10. And this is called Butterflies of Southeast Texas and the Upper Texas Coast. So it has the caterpillars, the seasons, and the host plants. And that is the key. So let me give you an example. So when I open up my reference guide, one of the things you'll see is examples of the butterfly that will help you identify the butterfly. It also will have what the caterpillar looks like, when it flies in your area, and what the host plant is. And you can see this is a Gulf fritillary, this nice orange and black butterfly. It's two and a half to three inches. It flies most of the year and the passion flower is the species that it will lay the eggs on and the caterpillars will eat. And so you've heard me talk in my videos on why I like to garden vertically, for instance. This five piece trellis all throughout here is passion vine. And I can have hundreds of caterpillars on this passion vine and I can't tell that it is being eaten because there, it's just so fresh and lush. The thing that I have done is I planted four of these passion vines in the ground. 
and I have in containers one on each end. So I had four, five, six. I had a minimum of six passion vine that are all along here. Now, of course, this is multiple years and you can see it's just lush back in through here. But this hosts butterflies all the time. I have butterflies, female butterflies laying eggs here all the time. And so to have butterflies, you really need to have host plants. The reason I recommend getting your information is so you know what butterflies are predominant in your area. Another example of a host plant is the shrub or bush that you see here is called a flame acanthus. This happens to be native to Texas. It has, it's gone through one beautiful flush of blooms about two weeks ago and now hopefully it'll be flushing again. We'll see. But this is a host plant to a small butterfly and I'm going to bring this into the screen called the Texas Crescent and it's about one inches to one and three quarters inch and I have lots of flame acanthus here and I also have shrimp plants in my garden so you can take a look at what plants host these butterflies and then the butterflies that you are interested in attracting to your yard you can then plant them and you will have success in luring and getting butterflies into your garden and of course it's really important to also have nectar plants but the host plants are what guarantees you success on having butterflies in your gardens. I am going to put a video that I did last year on the top of the screen and these are of the host plants that I had last year so you can see some examples of host plants that grow well here along the Texas Gulf Coast. But again every region is different so remember look up your region what plants work best in your area. Then of course you have to have nectar plants and nectar plants are flowering plants that produce nectar for the butterflies. This is a beautiful Mexican bush sage also called Salvia leucantha and I tell you my black swallowtail butterflies absolutely love this flower. But Nectar flowers are very important to pollinators and butterflies and hummingbirds. And salvia, this happens to be salvia amante, this beautiful kind of neon pink color. The larger butterflies like this tubular shaped salvia. So if you have nectar plants, you will attract butterflies coming through your yard, of course, to have a meal. My mounding lantana is just flowering gorgeously again here. And butterflies love lantana. The Gulf fritillary just loves coming over here to this mounding lantana. Isn't this beautiful? You know, this is a tried and true plant in the south here in this humidity. This lantana does not miss a beat with the conditions that we have and it pretty much flowers from spring until first frost. And when you have butterflies it's pretty important that you find plants that will provide nectar, a source of nectar anyway, for most of your growing season. And then as you're doing your research, you're probably going to come across some really unique pl nectar plants or host plants that are native to your area that provide a specific function. 
And this plant happens to be what's called the Greg's Mist Flower. And this is native to Texas. It is a very popular plant, nectar plant, with butterflies and in particular monarchs and queen butterflies. And the reason this is popular with queens is because it has a compound that the male queen butterfly needs for reproduction. And so it grows very well. Greg's mist flower grows very well in the garden and I have attracted more queen butterflies to my yard ever since I started planting this plant. And for those of you who are wondering what a queen butterfly looks like, it is orange and black and has white spots. It's a fairly large butterfly, three to three and a half inches. And in our area, it flies March through December. It's just like the monarch right next to it in that it uses the milkweed as its host plant. But in addition, this queen butterfly, the male, uses this Greg's mist flower to get the component that is needed. Very, very fascinating. I also like it because of this chartreuse color of the foliage. I think it works really well in a garden because it also makes, visually, it makes it pop. So this is a nectar plant. Next to it I have pentas, which are nectar plants. And in here amongst I have a beautiful, wonderful, giant milkweed. I do have native species, but my native aquatic milkweed and, oh, I forget the other name um, that happens to be native to Arizona, that they've started to die back. My giants are very prolific here. They love our weather. I like how they look. I also like how they sustain a lot of monarch caterpillars. So if you truly want butterflies and invite butterflies into your garden, you need to consider having both host plants and nectar plants. I've got a pipevine swallowtail butterfly that is feeding on a nectar plant here, which is my purple porterweed. This happens to be a really good nectar plant. The larger butterflies, hummingbirds, and native bees love porterweed. Sometimes you can have a plant that that really achieves both. And for instance, this candle stick tree, a Senna alata, has both nectar, but it's also a host plant to the sulfur butterflies down here, which are the yellow butterflies that we have flying in our area. Host plants typically are perennials, but of course there are host plants also that are annuals. And the point that I want to share with you that it's important to plant multiples. And what I mean by that is, is you can't just plant one plant and expect a butterfly to lay on one host plant. And in fact, for monarchs, they recommend planting a minimum of six milkweed plants for those females to come down and consider laying eggs on your host plants. So what I'm showing you here is I have a host plant. You've heard me talk in, in other videos about this because it's such a wonderful host plant. This is the white veined Dutchman's pipevine.
And that black swallowtail butterfly that I showed you earlier lays its eggs on this host plant. And I have eight different plants all throughout here. And you can see they're just starting to come back because they get eaten down to the ground by the caterpillars. So the, the plants where I have the most host plants of are the ones that I have the most butterflies in the yard. And that is by design because I have found if I just plant one or two, that is not enough. Let me show you an example of that. This is my north garden bed and I had a beautiful stand of fennel. I had 14, I think, fennel plants all along through here. And this was fantastically beautiful. And I would have eastern black swallowtails lay eggs on these plants every day. And it was just a wonderful thing. So why am I showing you dead plants? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know what caused my fennel to die back, but I think it was lack of water. I had a problem with some drip my drip irrigation and I lost all my fennel. So now I have no plants for my Eastern black swallowtail butterflies. And I have seen them in my yard and they've been flying around here, but there's nothing for them to lay eggs on yet. I have one plant here. This is called a false nettle. And I have never seen a red admiral butterfly lay eggs on this plant. I've got a couple of volunteers now down here in my garden bed from this plant. But because I only have one, I've never seen caterpillars on my false nettle. So if I really want to have red admirals, let me show you a picture. Oops. If I want to have these red admirals in the garden, I need to have more of this false nettle. I have seen them visit my garden for the nectar plants, but I don't see them frequently because I don't have any egg laying. So I have to really decide if I want more of this plant and I'm not sure. We have such a long growing season down here that I always strive to find plants that are really good nectar plants for a long period of time. And of course, my host plants. Coleus tend to be a really good nectar plant for all different kinds of pollinators. And because we have such a long growing season, I am not one that likes to plant multiple plants in all the different seasons. I want my plants to thrive and grow, really, for, for months. But not everybody has those same desires. So find out what works for you, what you want in your yard, what colors you want in your yard, and then really figure out your host plants and your nectar plants to bring those butterflies in. One of the plants that I'm showing you here is a Mexican sunflower called Tithonia. And this is a beautiful host plant to butterflies. They love Tithonia. And so I will always try to have Tithonia in my garden. Typically, I'll also always try to have zinnias in my garden and I don't this year because I just it got away from me for planting my zinnia seeds but they love zinnias and tithonia as nectar plants. My Mexican flame vine is starting to bloom a little bit here and there. A little bit in the fall. This is another plant that is a pretty darn good nectar plant, especially in the spring. 
but I am getting some blooms on it this fall. Certainly not in the quantities that I would like to see, but hopefully I can see some really nice growth tips up here on the Mexican flame vine. So hopefully I'll have some good flowers on this plant soon. So just to recap, to invite butterflies into your garden, host plants are super important to get the butterflies into your yard. Of course, nectar plants will invite them to stop by because they get hungry. So having both is wonderful. Once you have that, then you can look into other things that you might want to try, like providing water or a puddling station. But really, butterflies will find, will find natural puddles. They do in my yard. I haven't seen a lot of monarch butterflies this year. Last year I released a lot. This year I haven't seen an awful lot, but here's a monarch on the porterweed. Stopping by and getting nectar. Well, thank you for joining me today. Down here in the south, our butterflies will fly pretty much 10 months out of the year. And some fly year round. If we don't have a freeze, they are flying 12 months out of the year. So if you invite butterflies into your garden, it's also key to provide food to nourish them. So think about that and the different seasons and what flowers are available in your garden in the different seasons. Well, thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day today. And I hope to see you again soon.